<laughs> like I had my own cabin. It was what with a kitchen and and it was like a it was like a one bedroom apartment, but a cabin. That sounds like the gangster. most Subaru hotel. Ever. <laughs> <laughs> Is it a tenter? Have you guys heard about that that website tenter? No, it's like Airbnb, but for like fancy ass tents for like yurts. No basically yurts yeah and they're just posted up like in all these random spots that's pretty and, cool yeah it's like a. it's the sub site of murderer pretty much yeah <laughs> with with, with two r's words. and no e <laughs> m-u-r-d-r-r murderer ipo but... coming next year <laughs> Welcome to the Off the Road Again podcast. I'm Chris. I'm Ross. Hi, my name is Jeff. <laughs> Hi, Jeff. I always wait to hear how Jeff is going to introduce himself because he's the only <laughs> one who consistently does it differently. <laughs> well, because like, I feel like it, this, this is not my show. You guys have done an amazing job of creating this. You got the best guests. You guys are crushing it. But it's also like it lives on Hooniverse. So it's like, it's like my grandkid. <laughs> I'm getting older so like I could just be a, a fucking goofball on it yep you're the grand exactly. guy who's like hey kids you want some beer yeah hey yeah. <laughs> well no it's a nice tequila it's nice, nice. <laughs> fuck yeah Ross normally it's sugar the grandparents give them sugar and then hand it back they can't give them beer yet how old are the grandkids <laughs> my oldest is only dogs, 13 by the way. <laughs> faintly dogs faintly yeah uh, they're, they're, they're our terrible foster dogs so they're You'll hear dogs for the next few minutes, and then because my my wife and kid just got home, but well, don't tell them they're terrible. <laughs> well, I know we don't like these dogs, but oh, we're gonna awesome. foster them because that's what we signed up for. Right, but you're good people, even if they're like not good they want to spit me three times. Oh shit! No one's gonna take these dogs. I'm screwed. Bite <laughs> <Hide> him back. <laughs> Fucking bite him back. Anyway, does that work? Like if they Sorry. don't. Sorry, car show, car show. No, like, what, there are people who have dogs that listen to this, so, like... Oh, of course. How does that work if, like, they're shitty dogs? Like, normally with a foster, like, oh, they get adopted, but, like... Yeah, Ask Texas we, Dave. I don't know. So, like, we signed up for it. We're holding on to them, you know, as long as we can. They're old, though, but, like, at some point, they start to impact your quality of life, and you have to work with the foster agency. Hold on, my daughter's walking in right now, sweetie. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so... Um, you work with the foster agency and be like, listen, we got to figure something else out. We're, we're getting close to that point, which is tough because, you know, we love all dogs and one of the two, cause they're a bonded pair, which makes it tough. Um, and the one is 13, the one is 11, okay. the one that's 13 is fine. It's a little food defensive, but that's it. It's otherwise a sweetheart with minimal maintenance. And then the 11 year old is the one that sucks. <laughs> so, yeah. I don't yeah. know. I don't know. Uh, it's, yeah, I was just curious. That was just me. So yep. anyway, this yeah. is our podcast about anything and everything <laughs> off-road, and we're going to talk about dog fossils. It's not the first time we've talked about dogs on the show. Like, Texas Dave has been on the show. He talked about Rally Rescue. Like, it's definitely, it's a theme. Car people tend to like dogs. Is that his own thing? So, yeah, it's yeah they have site. Rally, awesome. Rally Ready Driving School, and then it's Rally Rescue. So he has, like, rescue dogs on site at his, because I know he has that killer property. Yes. Well, they just wander in. Like, it, I guess it's a giant problem down around Austin. These dogs just wander in, and he's like, all right, I guess we're taking care of this one until we find oh it a new God, home. That's amazing. That video they of the guy cooler. stopping on the track was fucking crazy. Oh, shit. Like, they're out in, like, a hot lap doing training, and they just happened upon this dog and just picked it up, threw it in the car. I'm like, well, I guess we're taking it. And the guy adopted it. Wow, that's, that's so cool. Crazy. Yeah. So, anyway, uh, we're still socially distant. It's the only way we can do the show. I'm still in Kansas City, Ross in Connecticut, and Jeff's in California. And we are all now in our own homes. Mm. Ross bought a house. So. <laughs> yep. And it rained for the last uh, forever. So it's been fun. Here too, which I, never Ooh. Yeah. I was saying, like, that's, that's actually newsworthy. <laughs> like, that is newsworthy. <laughs> well, we didn't Nor'easter, so that was newsworthy apparently. Uh, but okay, the news, speaking of news, um, c 8 zo oh no, wait, wrong show. So. <laughs> you can, I mean, it came out flat plane. We're talking about that on the Hooniverse podcast tomorrow night with Ron Ma. <laughs> nice. <laughs> well, it, it looks good. I mean, it doesn't necessarily look good, but the specs look good. So, yeah. 670 horsepower, flat plane V8, uh, huge brakes, lots of aero. It's going to be fast as fuck. Yeah. I think they already, somebody already quoted like a zero to 60 time potentially of like two six. Saw two six. Which is. Which is 
for a rear wheel drive, not electrically assisted, non-forced induction. I mean, it helps with naturally aspiration, but it's not even like it, it's making the torque down low. You know, it's true. It's it's the power's at the top, though. I, I'm sure the torque curve is like fairly flat for a non-first force induction engine. Um, but because <laughs> peak horsepower is at like 8,400 <laughs> and, and red lines, 8,600. And the engineers said, theoretically, it have no problem spinning past that. Right. So, you know, there's going to be a tuner being like, or Hennessy will probably be like, ours goes to 9,000. <laughs> That's what everybody does with the coyote engines. Yeah. It just bumped the red line up by like 600, but no. So the rear tires are 345s. So that definitely helps with traction. And they have 345s on twenty. How many manufacturers wheels. make a 345? Well, this is, a, I don't know if you guys actually like saw pictures of this, but it, it's supposedly the most track capable, quote unquote, street tire ever made. And it, it's a slick. I mean, there's, it's like, it looks like an R compound slick. There's like two little grooves on the outside and that's it. So, oh. I, I so as soon as it, it rains in LA, someone will wrap one around uh, yes. everything. <laughs> Stay tuned to Copart. Yeah. But yeah. So that, that definitely helps with traction. Wow. Yeah. Things I'm, I'm trying to remember what was on like uh, the last Viper I drove years ago was an ACR. Probably 325s. Or I was going to say 325 or 335. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that so, was at the time just insane. And that's that, the ACRs in the last two years of Viper are still really, really, really fast. And those had a stick too. So yeah, those were with their little dump truck engines. They were pretty <laughs> beastly. Things. Little. Eight point four well, liters. <laughs> maybe compared to an actual dump truck engine, I guess. Maybe. Yeah, right. I was looking at Dakar trucks today. That was eight point nine. So yeah. Oh, the, that one okay. that, that they released today, like eleven hundred horsepower. Yeah, the Hino or whatever. That's oh, the, definitely the Dakar truck shown. Yeah, yeah. It was, a, it was like a thousand forty six horsepower and like sixteen hundred pound feet of torque, just like. <laughs> And how much travel was it? I got. I, I it, it was a lot. It was the 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 press photo was jumping like it was already like in the air that's so awesome the car i mean the the big and i'm assuming it's one of the big Dakar yeah trucks. yeah it's like one of the like, commercial like, size the Kamaz like style yeah um those are if you had to pick like and no one would ever think of this if you just asked the average race fan like what are some of the coolest racing vehicles on the planet any um er, any type of motorsport no one their first thought wouldn't be that style of truck unless you know they're in that world but then as soon as you bring it up they're like oh yeah those those for sure because those are just the wildest things ever i need a picture from the side <laughs> i saw one in go. person in action once a kamaz i think it was like one of the red bull trucks um at goodwood and it you know it would take that the red bull that released that video earlier this year last year which one i don't um oh probably arley yeah that's the one that that that's the 1046 horsepower and 16 oh my god it was 19,000 pounds. <laughs> it's a hybrid. Um, the interesting thing, too, is normally when you see these, they're usually like um, more cab over style. So it's weird yeah. to see a snout on one of these. Right. It looks like a, like a traditional truck. Yeah. And I think when when the, the crews that run these, I think they're usually three person teams in these, right? Like, yeah. There's that, like, they're that like engineer jump seat yeah. guy. Yep. <laughs> Oh, it's so sick. Least comfortable spot in racing. Yeah. Oh, God. Yeah. Except for maybe a dude that hangs off the sidecars in motorcycle racing. Yeah. That might be worse. So it's definitely a Japanese team because it's all the Toyota, Denzo, yep. oh, yeah. Asian. I don't see Tokiko. No, I mean, it literally says Tokyo on the door, though. <laughs> right. <that's it. laughs> I guess the Asian styled fish up top. There's uh, kanji on there. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Anyways, so anyway, that wasn't even in the show notes. So no, cooler than anything else we're going to talk about. Good, yeah, definitely good well, addition. Uh, Ross wants to go to New Range Rover next. I want to go to I want to go to Fancy Land. Okay. So New Range Rover. Yep, yep. Fuck up the fancy words. New <laughs> Range Rover has been released. It's the fifth generation. Uh, things to know here that are important. There's a three row model. Auto blog says that it's going to use the same liter three same. Three liter in line six. There's a 48 volt mild hybrid. The fast one gets a V8 from BMW, the zero to 60 and 4.4, which absolutely nobody needs. It's, thinking of, it's not using the old five liter? No. I think that, that one's they, dead. They were talking about retiring that for a while. Yeah, but yeah. They, the, 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 but the, the Fender V8 hasn't even landed here yet. And that that's going to get the five liter. 
kind of wonder if that's going to be the last, like the last time that that engine's used. Interesting. I, I didn't know about that. So yeah, so BMW engine. Um, give me five seconds. Why is my computer freaking out? <laughs> because you're talking about a German engine, British SUV. <laughs> Probably. I I can't figure out why you Zoom know is like having a conniption. British guy's grandfather is like, I would never. Exactly. <laughs> right. Like grandpa, okay. it's been a long time. Actually, Germany's Germany's better than us now. How do, you, Brexit how, how, how do you address every Mini Cooper since they brought it back? Yeah, good <laughs> yeah. point. Good point. <laughs> Those okay. are all German. Yeah. Last few things of note. The hybrid version launches in 2023. 62 miles of range. Ooh. 62 whole miles of range. There's a that's, full EV in impressive. 2024. You Ooh. can get power-assisted doors at every door, which is... Is that like as I walk up fancy. to it, it opens for me? I my understanding of it is that the doors, like, you know how there's the button on the trunk to open it and close it. You can do oh, that with every door. You know what oh. it could be? It could be um, like so. Audi has a unique door system where you don't. It's like there's an electrical section and then a mechanical section. And when you push past the, uh, when you push past, so if you just do it lightly, the electric section, you just do it a little touch, and the door pops open. Okay. And then if you push, you can pull it and the mechanical like portion opens. It's, it's, it's a weird in between space. So I'm curious if it's like that, or if it is like you were saying, like a full, like I'm here. And I wouldn't be surprised with the, the designer at Land Rover, if it wasn't like, I won't I'll make a statement piece. And, They'd uh, be the ones to do it. <laughs> yeah, they would. You're right. And this and is the model it. to do it on. It also has two shark fins in that photo. It does. It does. And it also has some of the worst taillight treatment I've ever seen. It looks seen. like a Telluride from behind. It does. I don't, oh my God. I don't like the taillights. I'm totally with you. Like everything else is, to, it's, it's cause it's just like an evolution of the design. Um, there's some Velar elements in there, which are fine. Cause the Velar is right. actually pretty stylish. Um, I'm not sold on the taillights either. I got to see them in person and in different colors. I'd like to, I'm sure if you saw a black one, like a full black Range Rover, you'd be like, mm. oh, that's fine. Yeah, they the, the release colors are this tan and then it was like a red one, but like it it didn't get better with the red one. Like no. No, they should have that's like uh when I went and saw I finally drove the tundra in person and it was like, nope, doesn't look good in person either. Uh, bummer. Bummer. <laughs> Everything else about the truck is awesome. It just looks like it's ugly as hell. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the recurring theme here as we go further into the world of like companies having to differentiate their cars based on how they look because the performance gaps are getting so slim is that they need to just like stop. Like <laughs> they're just going that one notch too far to try to make things distinct. Like these taillights would have looked great if maybe they had boxed it in instead, you know, or, but like they had to do something to distinguish it to make it look special right and i don't know it, it kind of it looks like it came from like mansory or something <laughs> it's i mean that's almost too far <laughs> yeah okay fair enough <laughs> um but yeah it's it's i don't love it I, i'm gonna reserve full judgment till i see it in person and in different colors because range rovers usually look pretty damn good and as insane as their lead designer is yeah that's not a great yeah angle. but what is that what's that extra piece of tail light going on yeah. there i don't know that's missing from the ones they launched today is that so this this came off the media site for jlr so again i'm really curious about the double shark fin thing that's super weird and that was an sv badge one too so i want that's probably an autobiography yeah no the autoblog article said that sv autobiography is no longer a thing oh well, it that is, is literally an SV bag. Yeah, no. You were right. <laughs> this has got to be a render. It's no, okay. It's so this replaced is replaced by SV Serenity. Well, and this oh, is no. the SV Intrepid, <laughs> according to the file name. Arr. So, okay. Oh, so, this is all unnecessary. <laughs> right. This is all extremely all right. unnecessary. <laughs> there's there's going to be some guy in the future that's like, no, no, I have oh the God. Intrepid, which makes mine better than your Serenity because I get this package. Like, but that, I, I, I'm blanking on his name, um, but he's like the most wonderfully insane, just 
Like, if you take him the way he's supposed to be taken, it is hilarious. Otherwise, you're going to get crazy offended. The dude who do, who's in charge of Land Rover, like, design right now. Um, oh. God, Jerry? Heard, yeah, Jerry. Um, McGovern? Jerry McGovern. Oh, my okay. God. <laughs> he wears, like, big ascots, and, and he's, an, he's an outgoing personality. And I was on an event. I think it was the launch of the Velar, actually. It was in Palm Springs. Cause he loves, you know, mid-century modern stuff. He loves Palm Springs aesthetic and they rented this mansion for the presentation. And the first part of the presentation was relating it to his own house back in, in England. Um, and basically showing us how rich he was, oh which was God. fucking amazing. And then another time <laughs> they held an event for the defender at the LA auto show. Um, they had a media event and then they had a fan event because then like John Mayer was going to come out and sing and shit but he came out and he said something like this is my I was the only one in the room who laughed at this um, and there's like it's like 50 50 60 journalists there was yeah, yeah Jared McGovern is the man <laughs> like in the worst way he's so funny this is um, the nicest photo I could find <laughs> yeah no he's uh he's it's awesome he I love him uh, uh Richard Porter who used to write for Top Gear or yeah. maybe I don't know if he still writes for Grand Tour or not. Sniff Petrol. Sniff Petrol. He he and I would go talk about him on Twitter a bunch, but he um he he did this joke where he came out in front of this crowd. I'm laughing, thinking about it. He came out in front of this crowd of journalists, and like journalists are like scraping for ramen, you know. And he's like, he's like, he says, um, it's like if I had a nickel for every time someone asked me about the new defender. I'd be richer than I already am. And I'm, I'm in the room, I'm in the back of the room crying. I'm like, oh my God, this is everything I want from you because like I've experienced this before. And to me, it's like, it's a level of comedy where I don't think he's actually being funny. To me, it's, it's hilarious insane and it's i love it and it's so good and then like if you talk to uk journals there's so many stories there's like mm. ooh, and I, I i tweeted i think the night in palm springs i was text messaging with a pr friend who's no longer in the industry but he's a british uh pr person who now works in like aviation he's out of the industry and i was like i said i'm like dude i had the best <laughs> press conference tonight and he's like oh that sounds like classic mcgovern and ah, oh, he's the best <laughs> In like the worst way. Exactly. Yeah. It's Funny. <laughs> like Great. there's there's nothing well paying about auto journalism at all. The perk is no. press cars. Like that's no, it's in it, trips. Until you like there are certain levels to hit and it's really hard to get there. Uh, and it takes a lot of work and, and time and recognition and, and um it is possible, though it is funny. Uh, this is a, a digression but it's related to what we were just talking about. I work for, you know, I'm full-time at Cox Automotive these days um, on the auto trader side, doing the videos for auto trader. Um, but they still let me do the show on motor trends. I mean, we'll see if we get a season three or not. I keep hearing, yeah, it's unofficial, but yeah, wink. Um, um, and then uh, they let me do Hooniverse too. Uh, I mean, they should motor trend because it's the least expensive show in their they roster by far. Too, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but um, back uh, like a year or two ago, someone posted a job interview in one of the auto Facebook groups for a Kelly Blue Book job or a Cox Automotive job or something like that. And people were like, people always complain about how there's no money in automotive journalism. And I'm here to say, if Cox Automotive has a job open, you should apply for it. Yeah, because it's they real money. Well, mm -hmm. and there's benefits and there's 401ks and there's all this great stuff. And there's like, literally, they don't even have vacation dates because it's like, is your work getting done? Take as much time as you want. Um, it's one of those companies. And um, so and it's they always have funny offices to be. everywhere. Everywhere. Yeah. yeah. Like there's I mean, a Kansas yeah. City office. There's no every other job. It's like you got to move to Dearborn. I'm like, oh, yeah. I'm yeah. move to Michigan. Yeah. Carlos Lago moved to Michigan. Carlos Lago <laughs> just packed up to go head video production at Car and Driver, which is probably a great position because they're trying to revamp it. And if they bring in him, they're probably going to let him like actually shape what he it. Wants. Yeah. And yep. Carlos is really good at it. So I'm sure he's yeah, going to do really well. But they must have offered him something wonderful to be like, hey, come to Michigan. And yeah, he packed up and, and he's out. Yeah, there's like, a Hearst listed like five the other day. In the city? They're all in Detroit. Like, Oh, interesting. Yep. Rob, Robbie tagged me and all of them like, homie, I'm not moving to Michigan. Like, I love visiting. <laughs> I love visiting. Wisconsin was great last week. Michigan's fun when I go every now and then. I'm not just leaving. Cost of living sucks. Like I'm, I'm in the cheapest market. <laughs> the oh, in Michigan sucks. I, compared to here, like everything is more expensive than where I am. 
<laughs> don't come here. <laughs> yeah, don't come here either. No, I, I, homie, like you could have bought two of my houses for what you bought yours for. I'm aware. Like, oh, <laughs> don't, yeah, but you have a shitload more land and blah, blah, blah. Uh, not a lot of land, but I have way more square footage. <laughs> and more room between houses, probably. Uh, it's not as much as you think in our neighborhood. Oh, no, well, you're probably yeah. in a little community then. Yeah. I mean, it, the elementary school behind me does create, like, I have a soccer field in my backyard. Like, there's plenty of space. Like, I'm not. So, anyway, do hey. we want to talk about the new Sierra? Because it seems like something we should talk about. We should talk about it quickly. Uh, it is something that people, parent, pick up, people care about pickup trucks. That's- yeah. A thing these days so let's let's touch on it so they're there's like the only thing that's not super affected by microchip shortage yeah apparently because they're taking all the chips from the other cars just to dump them into the trucks that looks good it I looks think- fine so it's new it's a new sierra quote unquote new it's just revised the big story is the at4x which photo tier photo tier um it is basically their equivalent of the new Chevy Silverado ZR2. So it's not really a full hardcore off-roader in the sense of like a Raptor or a TRX or anything like that. Is it better than Trail Boss? It's better than Trail Boss. So it has front and rear lockers. Don't they already have AT4? They do have AT4. So this goes one further. So it gets the Multimatic DSSV shocks. Oh. And it gets front and rear e-lockers, which is especially important for something that weighs, you know, like 6,500 pounds. And yeah, um, it looks like Duratrax. I think that's what's in those pictures. It's kind of hard to tell. Yeah, it's Goodyear Wranglers. And they change the looks a little bit. They widen the grill more. You know, it's got more LEDs. It's got red tow hooks. And uh, yeah, the, the interior is new. That's the big that's, other that's thing. That's not bad looking. And if you get front and rear lockers and that Multimatic suspension, that's for the average person, that's plenty. It's a lot of truck. It, it definitely has, looks It has like sliders too. Yeah, it has, those are rock does sliders. Have yeah. sliders. Those are I real sliders. It didn't say if they're bolted or welded. They look is, real though. Like the way, yeah. you know, those look like real sliders. They're metal. Yeah. Um, the wheels suck. The wheels are terrible. A couple other interesting that's little things. That's the regular Sierra wheels though. It's just. Yeah, no, the, just I mean, but they should yeah. give it more of a, of a more off-roady wheel that looks like like if it had silver elements it would look like an off-the-shelf fuel wheel yeah yes oh for sure no offense ron kmc or somebody <laughs> so in, the interesting thing i just want to touch on in, in the pictures here uh first of all the lights on the front side of the mirrors are very odd they're just kind oh, of it, like you know what else has those though the bronco really are yeah, they as looks, awkwardly placed? it's awesome they're they're kind of cool. I are they, was using are they like a factory well, ditch light? Kind of. I didn't run at night, but there's a switch you can turn them on individually. Um, I think it is it part of their zone lighting features, but the the Bronco has those lights. Interesting. Well, you I mean you remember the FJ? The FJ was the one that kind of kicked was the, the curves off. One, right? It was like a little circle on the outside yeah, of those were mirrors. lights. They were lights. They weren't like they were, you know they were stylistic they were like appearance lights so on the bronco it's not just like a an exterior turn signal light that's on the mirror oh those are lights because that's what this looks like on the Sierra. it looks like a turn signal yeah but a turn signal would be at the edge of the light um and so that front and rear could see it i think that's similar to what the bronco is doing that's probably like a ditch lighty type deal which is brilliant because yeah it's cool yeah thanks factory Thanks, Factory. But it looks like actually now that I'm zooming in a little bit, it looks like there might actually be marker lights on the corners of the mirrors. Yeah, that, well, the little reflection makes me think yeah. marker light on the side. Um, the other thing I want to just point out to Chris is that this has no lower valence like all the GM trucks have. Yep. So I trim mine, Jeff. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like looking in. You can... I wonder if there's any protection underneath. I, uh, this this I... bump here looks like it's a, yeah, a skid of some kind it could be cladding though too like plastic um i, I, I hope I, it's something gmc I, you're paying for you know that's going to be an expensive truck so yeah it better be metal honestly this truck though at what's the pricing with the 6.2 and the 10 speed and they said the pricing starts at oh shit never mind it's 75 to get into that. yeah no that, I, that's where i would have guessed for sure <sighs> i was gonna for a AT- GMC, yeah. Damn, the standard AT4 is 61. Those lockers aren't cheap, bro. <laughs> so 
Silverado ZR2, 65. No, that's Raptor. No pricing to- as of yet. So the tow rating, even that's got to be what's the tow? I want to know what the tow rating is with the Multimatic because you have 13,000 pounds on here. It shouldn't affect it much. That's a shit ton of weight. Like, that's what 1500s tow now. Yeah, that is because, like, uh, the F 150 is over 12, right? Mm-hmm. Man, the God, Rivian man. is 11. The Lightning is supposed to be 12, right? Yeah, the Rivian's 11, but then you get 75 miles of range. The <laughs> wilderness is 3,000. Up from 2,500. Up from 1,500. Oh, it's 1,500? Yeah, so that's much. a big jump. That's, that's double. It's that's 100% more. I can math. <laughs> I can math. <laughs> but that's all, that's totally due to the gearing, right? There's no it's other. Transmission. It's transmission. It's almost totally transmission. And the tow hook does not come standard. Tow hitch or like? Hitch. The hitch doesn't come standard. So they doubled Which, the tow rating and then left the hitch off. That's yeah. kind of like the Frontier that they gave me that they just didn't have a hitch on. Yeah, I get the Frontier on Friday. <laughs> You've driven it though, right? I have. I'm, I am I really like it. It's fucking good. It's great. Like, <sighs> I didn't. So I, I put it's 700, crazy. I put 750 I miles on one and I like, I, I didn't love it as much as I had hoped when I was actually driving it. And then afterwards I, just, I was just, it's like, it's there, you know, it just, the Tacoma, after you get out of the Tacoma, most of the sentiment is goddamn that 3.5 sucks. And the seating position is hard, you know, that's what I was going to say, like do the same loop you just did in a Tacoma. Uh, no, thank you. Yeah. He'll have to get a new back operation. <laughs> also, no, thank you. But yeah, the, the Frontiers, the, I mean, and we were talking in the chat the other day about if they did like a real Pro 4X kind of thing, you know, like a ZR2 TRD Pro competitor. Well, I, I, they should do a Nismo. Oh, yeah, Nismo. Yeah. yeah. So as that went around the Slack channel, I was at the event in Wisconsin and was literally talking to Nissan's product planner and didn't realize I was talking to Nissan's product planner because we were... <laughs> Uh, no, this is the Midwest. Okay. So different guy. Uh, Wade is his name in the Midwest. Um, but What's his name in the East Coast. I don't know. I don't. It's like a Mitch Hedberg joke. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so I definitely was telling him I was like, we should definitely do the Nismo, and like, as because we, we just talked about it in the Slack, and then later he took off his sweater, and I was like, oh, you have a Nissan shirt underneath. So. Uh, <laughs> Telling you how to do your job. That's not a. Oh, they need to hear that stuff, though. <laughs> they need to hear that stuff. Uh, so well, that's, that's, that's. And fine. if you slot it in at what we talk about, like 50, 55, like. Yeah. I that's... said like just over 50 based on like, because like a tremor is under 50 to start, but sorry, I'm getting barely. Like, you know, the tremor. Yeah, barely. Um, and is that if it's F-150 certain... 50 tremor? No, no that's the range tremor. tremor. Oh, okay. Yeah. The, and the, that's if. For certain colors, they'll actually mark it up. Um, certain colors, they will mark the tremor up. Like if it's one of like the yellow or orange ones, they'll juice it up. If it's a silver one, they're like, get it off my lot. <laughs> um, <laughs> I like silver. That's good news for me. <laughs> yeah, no, me too. I wouldn't. Yeah. It's, and the tremor's good though. When I took it off road, I shot that video for um, Auto Trader and we were having really a lot of fun with it out near Barstow. This little off road loop I found, um, it started to like, fuck up and not like it it was really weird i think it was a that was the one with lynn right truck. yeah it was that same shoot it was where pre-row? maybe because it it did some weird things where like we literally just did a couple donuts around like some sagebrush like not like not hitting any big jumps nothing crazy and then every warning light came on and oh, then it fun. wouldn't give me full power and i'm like oh we need to like be able to drive this two hours home and i'm like fuck i'm like shut it off let it sit for a minute turn it back on and then like one warning light stayed and then went away and it was fine. I was like, what the fuck? Like, did something just like bounce up and like hit a wire weird or, you know, like who knows with okay. all the modern shit in vehicles. Um, but it was like, Ooh, and I, granted Mike Levine off-roads the shit out of his tremor for many miles, goes camping on Tatooine based on his photos. <laughs> right. and, um, he has no issues. He probably also has somebody, you know, comes through it after every, he, he probably serves as like final R and D at this point, but maybe, but he, I mean, he bought his, so yeah. Yeah. He, he, he's, he bought his Maverick. Um, I, I am or not. crushing on the Maverick kind of hard. I haven't driven it yet. Really want to drive it. It'll look um, good. We'll see. 
Did you but drive both engines? I only drove the hybrid. And I, I jumped out of the Santa Cruz and jumped into the Maverick like an hour later and was kind of like, I'd rather be back in the Santa Cruz. The interior is nicer. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. Just, and I don't know if it was because of hybrid and it was based on battery, but like there was a lot of like resonance in the, mm. in the interior. Like I felt like I could hear hmm. everything. And that was on a, a gravel road and like some pavement, like. So nothing crazy. No, it wasn't, it wasn't awful. It was just between the two in a short amount of time. I'd rather I mean, go back. The to thing to remember is that it's a cheap truck, you know, yeah. right. It's yeah. like in the low twenties, you get an economy, like any kind of a Sentra or a, fucking focus in the low 20s does the same thing i yeah. i kind of want to get into that was like an xl hybrid so like super okay. low level yeah i'd like to get into a nicer one and see you if you have like, steelies oh no okay no i had to think about it for a second i drove a lot in a short amount of time and so <laughs> you're still putting out pictures yeah exactly you, you guys keep talking maverick i'm getting a beer all right I gotta, um, I gotta get to my pictures real fast. I'm pretty sure it was an alloy. It wasn't Steely's. Ranger Trevor, yeah, I don't know. It's kind of crazy that the pricing is. An F one fifty Trevor was at the event I was at. I just didn't have time to get in it. Okay, you should have F two fifty Trevor and then shit on it on the internet, and then uh, see how that treats you. I, I, I did my <laughs> lukewarm take that comes out tomorrow where I think Broncos like 80% of 392 Wrangler and what are you crushing there? I can't I can't, can't see that. I can't see because the dumb Maverick's too big. All day Ooh. IPA. Good stuff. Good uh, car on the can too. Is that a Wagoneer? I think so. So it might be slightly style. No, that's a Wagoneer, yeah. Yeah. That's like a standby beer. Like it can't go wrong. Uh -huh. Have you driven Wagoneer yet? Um, yeah, and I wasn't that impressed. Um, the sound system is, I like the Grand Cherokee L better, um, in a, you know, the tighter package. Yeah. I drove Wagoneer. I didn't drive Grand Wagoneer. I think it was, mm -hmm. um, I don't know. It was like $96,000 or something like insane. The Wagoneer? Maybe it was the Grand then. It must have been Grand. Yeah. Because I think the. But there was something yeah, about it that I was like, this is just Okay. But the sound system, because you can get the Macintosh in both of them, I think. Yeah. Um, it's fucking incredible. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. Like, I love, you know, testing the sound, system, sound systems in cars. And most of them are just, like, pretty good. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I wonder. I don't remember what it was. I don't. I, I think the Grand, the Grand Cherokee L, I also think, looks better than the Wagoneer. The Wagoneer just. The Wagoneer is not, huge. Not it's, look a, it's kind of like a goofy Photoshopped Durango. 100%. Well, it's on a Ram 1500 chassis, so... Mm. So it's a goofy Photoshop Ram 1500. Interesting. <laughs> Whereas, like, the Grand Cherokee L just looks like a slightly bigger Grand Cherokee. And I like yeah. I like the newer design language for the Grand Cherokee. Um, I would like to try out a fully loaded Grand Wagoneer to be, like, see if this is, like, Escalade-esque, but with off-road capability. Because I haven't driven the new Escalade, and everybody says it is, like, unreal inside. It's Bowman, so Bowman was, like, looking at selling a kid. Oh really? It's like that yeah. good? They they, they theirs was a hundred and eight thousand dollars with yeah, the yes. diesel, and they were both All the diesel. Like, yeah, Zach Even and so. Kevin Ray from UTV Driver were like, "Yeah, this is the one of the greatest things we've ever driven." Yeah, I've heard the Super Cruise works perfectly on it. Like mm -hmm. I, I've heard the sound system is amazing. The seats are incredible. So, yeah, yeah. Anyway, uh, I did spend time in Grand Cherokee L. We never do we. I think I did talk about it with Robbie in the end of last week's Probably, show. Yeah. I I didn't realize FamCam got moved from the Pacifica over to the Grand Cherokee L. Oh. And then there were features there. Yeah, I definitely talked about it with Robbie because I forgot. I didn't know you could like double tap a seat and it would zoom in on the individual seat. Oh, that's cool. So Smart. like and but creepy. also you should you should also focus on the road. <laughs> yeah, <that too. laughs> well, for, I was in the to be honest, I rode in the Grand Cherokee L. Sharice okay. was driving. So uh but like you can double tap on the individual seats and it'll actually zoom in. So like if you're wanting to be like, what that what's that a-hole doing in the back? Right. right. That a -hole. What website is that child on? Yeah. You don't have to actually pull why does it over. start with Nick? Yo, that looks good. Send me that link. <laughs> <laughs> Text me that. Yeah. Uh, uh, sweet. Uh. So Jeff, where do you want to go? 
Because um, all of our stuff is boring. <laughs> I just had the Bronco two door Badlands. Okay. Um, that's since this is an off road podcast. Um, again, and that was the two three manual. Yeah, and it's good. Um, the clutch has feel, which the, you know the Wrangler doesn't. The, right. The, None so, whatsoever. And it's a get trag, so it's a good manual gearbox. <laughs> um, it's me. Um, and um, so yeah, it's good red paint. The top sucks. Um, yep. Did it make noise? Yes. Oh well, it as soon as you get up to any highway speed, it is like it's like there's a jet engine in the car. And I think it's all the seams. I've heard the soft top is quieter. Okay. Um, so that wasn't one of the ones that got replaced. No, okay. no. Um, as far as I know, I mean, it says on the thing, it says it is sound deadening and it's not enough. Um, it is not an impressive top at all. It's just way too much noise. So the three things, there's three things I don't like about the Bronco price. Cause like, it's expensive, but How much was that one? 51. See that, that was a bad lands. Yeah. That was a Badlands without Sasquatch. Um, so, it, but I don't like the price just because of that's how expensive cars are relative to Wrangler and even Defender. It's fine. The price yeah. is fine. It's sure. competitive. Okay, sure. um, minus, you know, not counting markups and all that <laughs> shit. Um, and It'll be $106,000. In four low with the crawler gear, you could drive up a wall. It was, I was blown away. And it, it, it's it so is, good. It's, it is a much better not bad. it well it is it is it's a much higher crawl ratio than the top spec rubicon whatever theirs is it's it's a good deal higher and there are points where i would be driving in that to like to get to the next like to go do the thing again for a shot and i had to like get out of crawler and put it into like second gear mm -hmm. so it wasn't at like four grand <laughs> you know <laughs> oh you it's could, fun in four low look, like that that person must be just like not on the gas to be oh. at, at 800 rpm that is literally walking i literally popped the clutch and let it do it like oh, I this applied, is your video okay this yeah. is me yeah yeah i applied no gas i let it do it i just walked and it was like loose surface like it wasn't steep it wasn't that steep but it was an incline and it just walked up it just fine i was i was even i put it on some stuff where I, like i was getting a front wheel off off the ground like okay. and it would just and like it would land and catch and go and blown away and not even just in four low and first gear it's a, a monster as soon as you put it into crawler it's like i can literally go anywhere <laughs> so um, just just for the listeners the rubicon's crawl ratio is 84.2 to one and the broncos is 94.75 to one in crawl gear yeah which one huge once you're approaching you hit, unimog rates yeah once you hit 100 to one you're talking like fully built you know dedicated off-road low-range crawling now, granted, that that's only in the small engine because yeah. you can only get the manual that way. And I've mm -hmm. driven the bigger engine. I spent one day with it and the big engine rips. It's great. I'm, I'm pleasantly surprised that the small engine, especially once, um, cause you, cause it's a small turbo. So there, there's like a tiny bit right at the bottom and it's, it's not a huge amount of lag, but there's a tiny bit where you're like, okay, that's decent. And then as soon as you're on boost, it's like, this is awesome. Like, cause it, mm -hmm. even the small engine is better than the rank, you know, the Wrangler offerings with like a few exceptions. 392, obviously. That's my buddy Derek's uh, 68 um, with a 351. Nice. What's, yeah. Are those 35 KM? 35 On KM his, piece? yeah, those are 35s. Nice. Yep. That's a good. Um, and the, the rank looks amazing. Yeah, the blue Wrangler, <laughs> I'm sorry, the red, the, the modern, I said Wrangler, the modern Bronco is on the 33s because it's a Badlands without Sasquatch. See, I I like the 33 on it. I think that looks good. Yeah. I don't know that you need to go much larger. Also, the 33s are KO2s and the 35s are Goodyear Wranglers, and I want the KO2s. Right. I do Which too. do you actually want to get to the trail on? KO2s. Yep. KO2s. Yep. I don't need notice, any Goodyear Goodyears. Right, both trucks in this shot are wearing BFGs. So there you go. Baja champion stamped into the tire. Uh, <laughs> Every time. Derek's truck is pretty fucking great. Um, it looks great. And uh, yeah, it's a cool truck. And he has some other cool vehicles. But he also has a Forester that he got for free that he's building into like a little off-roader as well. Nice. 
Foresters are fun. People forget it. Like, is it a first gen? Like one of the really boxy ones? It's an older one. Yeah. Like it has, oh, so you got it out of New England too. So there's like rust. And oh shit. God. <laughs> yeah. That's why you got don't go there. anywhere near it. You will get. But he's like this. 3D printed parts for it. He built like a new um, thing on the top of the center console and, and, and a few other things. Uh, it's pretty interesting. That's pretty cool. Yep. Has anybody driven or have you or anybody you know driven the 2.3 with the auto? No, I have not. Mm-hmm. Uh, but um, my boss at Cox Automotive, Mike Amusio, I think his is an auto. I know it's mm-hmm. the small engine. That's why he was able to get it so quickly. And randomly today, I saw a first edition on the road, um, which I didn't even think those were coming out yet. But um, Micah's, I'm 90% sure, is a small engine auto. So I'd be curious about that. Yeah, I've, I've seen that. By seen a couple base four doors on the steelies and it looks terrible it's yeah. so disproportionate yeah the oh, wheels are tiny the tires okay. are tiny which like they're asking people to come spend money yeah yeah but, which is funny because on the bronco sport to get the steely look wheels even though they're actually alloys you have to go all the way to the top and they actually look fantastic because they're 18s yeah, they with uh, uh wild peaks which are more, so more and more tires. automakers, more and more. Oh, it, he did something really cool on his Bronco. Um, so he did a video about, um, they did an update video about like five things they don't like about their Bronco. Uh, mm-hmm. And one of the things was that they got the um, secure code on the outside. Mm-hmm. I didn't know that is basically a wireless self-contained unit. Did you know that? Oh, that's right. He said he moved it. He, he, so when he got it, it, that is a dealer installed option. That doesn't oh. happen in the factory. And it's literally a light, like a battery. And if that battery goes, you have to replace the unit. But they like basically stick it to the door. There's no wiring. The door's not cut. And he so, said it was just slightly misaligned and it was bugging the shit out of him. So he went on a forum and he found what Ranger owners do is you take it off, you goog on the stuff off, and you put it on the inside of your gas door. Clever. Oh. And, it's, and it fits perfectly. That's so interesting. It's awesome. So, so like when you go mountain biking or surfing or something, right? leave the keys in the truck, lock it with the code, boom. Those are starting to pop up in the aftermarket too. And also just as like dealer installed options, not necessarily like something that appears as an option on the, you know, on the build and price. So Tacoma owners are doing it on the inside of the windshield. It's like an RFID type thing. And it's a little strip that goes on the inside of the windshield. And you can like, I guess there's enough pressure you can push and it's the same kind of thing interesting fucking cool yeah and that's like a jag land rover they have the little bracelet you can wear Mm -hmm. Um, the video is literally titled what's gone wrong yeah Uh, it's interesting because he's he's honest in his ownership and that i but i found that that swap to move this because i always thought those were wired in Um, for sure but to relocate it to the the inside of the the door filler or the gas is awesome Mm -hmm. yeah that's brilliant uh, but I, I, I'm a big Bronco fan. I, I I like it a lot. I need to drive it. I uh, started seeing a few of them around, but have not had seat time yet. So do what you can. I, I, I was, it took me a while uh, to get one. This is technically the first one. Even though I got that one for a day, it, was, it wasn't for me. It was from another auto journalist who works for Cox Auto. And they're like, you guys can take it for video for a day. Um, so the, the, this was the first one I had for me. Um, and Ooh, I, had to leave it, I had to leave it three days early because uh, so I could go to that Subaru trip to try the new Forester Wilderness. The Forester Wilderness is good. The Forester Wilderness is really good. Um, and the roads they had us on, normally you either have really good roads or you have really good scenery. This, mm. That picture can show you it was clearly a mix of both. Is it a fire um, road? That was a fire road. That mountain, I believe, is Mount Jefferson in the distance. The fact and that you could see a mountain in the different distance in Oregon is amazing. Yeah. Oh no God. To the left, there's a no thing. Rain. There's like three sisters were just to the left. Um, okay. It's, it's um, it was funny. It, it's it's you and the it's funny because the three people commenting besides Lynn, uh, um, Jason Fenske from Engineering Explained is from there originally or lived yeah. there for a long time. Daniel Cudmore is an actor who now lives mm-hmm. in uh bc and alex guapo is the guy who runs lone wolf which is a mountain bike website which if you're into mountain bikes you should go read and he lives he moved from california to bend so we were in his back door and he says it figures it's a subaru thing that's why i was there um literally 90 percent of the vehicles on the road in bend were subarus it's not an exaggeration it was wild every well, car there was a subaru bend is like the overland off-road capital of the world like every yeah, almost every rtt <laughs> 
maker is in bend like free so, spirit and it was Cascadia. it was it was either subarus or sprinters or you know like i saw two monteros and i, sh- I there's a shop i could have went to where somebody specializes in monteros but i was like just tired so i didn't make it over there and i wanted to go to one of the breweries um so and then there was another shop that builds off-road tactical vehicles that specializes in also doing montero stuff like two different shops in bend i could have went to um but the forester wilderness it was in they tuned the suspension on this thing perfectly obviously it's not a jeep it's not a bronco but for what it is I was insanely comfortable the whole drive. Um, the tires are a good compromise for on-road, off-road stuff. They're the the Geolanders, right? Yeah, They're not a super aggressive all-terrain, but um, enough to have a little bit of fun. So I really would love to see the the wheels are seventeens. I'm not sure you could clear with a sixteen. Uh, the brakes, brakes. The calipers are kind of chunky in the front. Maybe with an offset sixteen, but. I'd love to see just a tiny bit more tire because you know how BFG now makes that that light lighter duty it's like a trail edition, thing? isn't it? Yep. That yep. tire would be so awesome on this. Um, it even with the CVT, the thing ripped. We were driving it in a couple. I might have got all four off the ground at one point. Uh, might have. Not a joke. Allegedly, uh, the roads were sick. There was a good deal of articulation <clears throat> and. Um, it was very impressive. I, I really, especially it's under 40, well under 40, um, like around 36 grand or so, uh, maybe even less than that actually. And it's, it's a, it's a cool vehicle. If you're like a weekend warrior adventurer type. I I'm yeah. So have you, you driven out back wilderness? I did. So between the two, Outback has a little bit more power, I believe, if I remember correctly. But yeah, why isn't that engine in the Forester? Like, if that would be the the best combination of the two. The the road we were never on anything. We were on some roads that are pseudo. Well, no, there's a section we did that is kind of aggressive for what the Outback is. So I was impressed, but it was much shorter, um, where it was like thirty minutes of drive time off road and like. It was a short. It was a short event, the whole thing, uh, but you got enough to be like, "Oh, do you hear that? That's the fan and the e-tron just kicked on." That's yeah, that's interesting. Weird. Um, hopefully that's not too loud. Sorry. No. Uh, I can, hopefully that doesn't so, have anything else. To you know, I mean, we don't have a thermal event. Um, <laughs> thermal so event. not the, the first time it's been referenced today. <laughs> no. It was very something <laughs> shutting off the. Um, the on-road and off-road was a decent mix, but it was a much shorter event. With the Forester, we were off-road for o- almost the whole day. And hmm. it was, you know, it was it was a really good amount well, of driving. And, and man, I was extremely impressed. Approach, breakover, and departure are all much better on the Forester. They're good. They're not, you know, Jeep numbers, obviously. They're, they're, they're none of that. Uh, but ground clearance is 9.2, which is... Ex- extremely strong i mean it's more than an f-150 um so for a just a tall wagon uh this thing will have no problem keeping up with the average person on your average trail not Mm -hmm. at all and be comfortable i I can't stress how well the suspension was damped it so did the forza suspension feel like the outback suspension I never got a chance to drive the Outback as quickly as I drove the Forester, so I okay. can't say that for sure. But I'm assuming it's probably pretty damn close. I okay. mean, it has to be. So I, it, it, it's probably good. But I, I do know for sure that the Forester handled some pretty good speeds on some pretty uh, some serious movement on the road extremely comfortable like it wasn't just me as the driver being like oh that was good when your passenger was like okay sure it was like we both were like wow in a couple moments (laughs) there we were both like i thought that was going to be bad right then and it it was nothing because that's so So much fun when you expect the worst (laughs) i I basically created my own test loop at road america when i was up there so i would drive over the same section every time and the the outback wilderness on the, the gravel road that was pretty rutted up was great like it, it's it probably just, the same it just kind of glided across there i was like the only other thing that's been this good was like the wrangler and the bronco everything else yeah felt 100%. like crap <laughs> and the and the the forester would be even better because it weighs 200 pounds less so right. so it's 3700 pounds to slam 
which compared to the Bronco, which is like more hefty, hefty. <laughs> How much does e Tron weighs? Seven? 56. Oh, no, no, no. 51. Uh, 51. Yeah. Batteries are fucking heavy. I live in trucks, Turns so out. my estimates yeah. go up. Yeah. I don't know, 9 to 500. <laughs> exactly. Is that what the, uh, the Hummer is? It's like 9,000 yeah. 9, yeah. pounds. It someone is. wrote on Twitter when they revealed the weight, they're like, uh, you technically, if they sold that here, you need a different license to drive it on public roads. Yeah, it, you could, it falls into a like a CDL. Yeah, Good almost it falls into that range for the UK equivalent. Yeah. <laughs> Everybody who's driven it says it's kind of insane, like in, in a. A How good can it way. not be? Right. Like all the specs are insane. So yeah, they are. Ugh, I'm so scared of seeing those things on the road. They're, like we don't need anything that wide. Oh, like, I feel like they're going to come standard from the factory with the Gadsden flag and um, like all kinds of shit. It's going to be a, a shit show. Hundred percent. Don't tread on me. Stickers are just pre-installed. Yeah. Don't know? tread on me. The person who can afford this, which means he makes four hundred thousand dollars a year. Don't tread on me. Yeah, it's okay. like a hundred thousand okay. dollar vehicle. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the launch edition is even more. Isn't it like one twenty or something? One seventy. Yeah, they're starting with the launch and then working their way to like lower. Fuck that. Whatever the like lowest battery spec of that thing is going to be would probably be an abomination, you know, because it's not going to, it's not going to do this. It's not going to be the mm-hmm. same. Mm-hmm. So speaking of competition, uh, you competed in something. Oh yeah. 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 Yes. I did. <laughs> you got lemons. <laughs> no, not that. I know. I know what you're talking about. I know what you're talking about. We, but lemons is fun, though. Yeah. Like, lemons we, is fun. No, it, we had a very typical lemons experience, but that's not what you're talking about, right? No, I'm not talking okay. about lemons. You were talking about the 2020, tw- tw- that's way in the future, the 2021 Land Rover Trek event. So, was this like, is this a, a, a competition like anybody can sign up for, or was this like we invited specific no. people? So, I was on a media wave and okay. then. The actual competition is is a dealer. Co- it's for dealers. Okay. So over the next week or two, they had seventy dealers come in over a, a handful of waves, and then there were finalists <clears throat> crown, and then there was a winning dealer. I forget where they were from, but a dealer won this. So like, there's a photo of me at the because I I won the media wave, uh, my team and I, and. Um, I got to hold the trophy and then I had to give the trophy back <laughs> just for the dealers. Um, yeah. That's so trophy. what exactly is Trek? So it, it's partially off-roading competition in navigation and traversing yeah, so it's, obstacles. It's, it's about more than just the vehicle and the driving. It's about knowing how to use a compass and, and understanding how to like read topographic maps and mm-hmm. in the full comp. So we couldn't go, to the full bore limit. And this counts for the dealer side too, because the, normally there's like a kayaking aspect and a mountain biking aspect and a running aspect. There was a slight bit of running in this one, but they couldn't get the bikes and the kayaks because of supply chain issues, Oh no! Um, which I was looking forward to, to the mountain biking side of it, but someone on my team was too. So the name Trek has nothing to do with Trek bikes, by the way. It's, it's literally a competition they've had for years that challenges their dealers. I think it started nationally and now it's around the globe. Um, uh, there's a trek in you know South Africa. There's a trek in the UK. There's all this stuff. There is a customer version of this though. Um, so backing up though for the trek one, those were special limited edition Defender Trek edition trucks that had special badging um, and all the all extra shit you see on them, like the limb risers and all that cool stuff. And then if you open the doors on the B pillar, there's like this holographic trim thing too that was really cool. Um, but they look fucking those awesome. are those are all purchased by the dealer. So like that one says North Carolina on it. Mm-hmm. We were driving a dealer's truck on our way. Oh, like, wow. I, think, I don't remember which dealer we had, but I wanted to find them because it had their names already on the side of it. And I wanted to say, hey, dude, good luck. I farted in your truck. You know, <laughs> um, is, that, is that the name on the back glass? Yeah, that's Land Rover Parsippany. Parsippany. Yeah. Sure. So there was like an Asheville, North Carolina. Well, okay. it was in Asheville, but there was like mission. They were all, all over, all over the country, 70 dealers competing. Mm-hmm. But now there's a customer version of this called the Defender Trophy, which kind of is like a play on Camel Trophy. It's not as aggressive, obviously, but the, the Defender Trophy trucks, and you have to be a Defender owner to compete in this. So it's for customers, not, not, um, 
journalists or well some journalists were there uh peter nelson friend of the site uh he got to go um but it's for customers if you own a defender you can enter these are finished in sand glow yellow so close to camel trophy colors um they're they're really cool looking trucks the logo looks like a camel trophy logo sort of mm -hmm. as close as they can get it and it's the same it also was at the same place where my event was but it's um i got paired up with two other journalists I got really lucky on my team because uh, they were really good at this stuff. Um, we competed against Lindsey Vaughn, the Olympic skier. She was on a VIP team and her team actually had two, two. She did really well. And the two other ladies on her team were also awesome, impressive people. Um, and um, yeah, that's the, so it's, it's sand glow yellow is it's not quite, you know, camel trophy color, but you can see the aesthetic is there. Yeah. Um, Same thing. It's close. Um, but that's my, my event was awesome because it took place in the grounds of the Biltmore Estate. And the night before, so we camped out the night before in the middle of a field and we got to kind of scheme how we were going to do it. And one of my teammates, Tommy Micah from TFL, you know, TFL cars, yeah. truck. Offer oh, you had Tommy with you? That's yeah. Um, and he said, he went to the instructors, like, are we allowed to use Onyx, which is an off-road trails app? And they're like, yeah. No, nobody else asked that question, but yep. We're like, okay. So we started plugging in potential spots for the, the, um, the different obstacles. And then we also, um, what else did we do? Oh, the other guy on my team was uh, Brian Dore. Uh, Brian Dore writes for Explore Elements, or he is Explore Elements mm -hmm. on Instagram. He writes for Tread Magazine. He does um, a, a bunch of, uh, he's an overland guy. I think he has a GX460 that's fully kitted out. So he knew a bunch of stuff too. Um, it all kicked off with us having, I was the navigator on the team to start, which meant I had to run about a half a mile down the road in boots and shit to all find <laughs> Land Rover people to then get the coordinates to then try to find our truck, which was over a mile in a different direction. So we had to like figure out where the truck was just to start the event. Mm -hmm. And we, we were like tied for first, uh, we were the first of two teams to reach the trucks um, right out of the get-go, which meant we could, we could put our plan in motion, which was to hit the farther checkpoints first. Mm -hmm. And they're worth different amount of points, but they have names, but you don't really know what they are till you get there. You can get points for not completing a trial. If you're like one of the only ones there, depending on who comes through it, there's one challenge or two challenges where you have to work with another team actually. And at dinner the night before, we're like, Hey, we're going to call you midday, figure out where we are. Then let's meet here towards the end of the day and try to tackle this one. So we did these challenges. There were six teams on the media wave. The sixth place team was this Canadian team that just did terrible. Like, but then fifth through second, the point spread was like 130 to 180 or something like that. Uh, you know, pretty good showing. Lindsey Vaughn's team came in second. We won, and our score was 221. We holy crap! Oh, we killed it. We smoked them. Like <laughs> it, it wasn't even a little bit close. Was the <laughs> off-road driving portion of it difficult in any um, capacity? So, we didn't realize it because we couldn't see the names of the challenge. We missed like two of the challenges where oh. it was pretty <laughs> legit, where one person couldn't like make it like mud up to the fenders, like all the shit. Oh, if nice. you look at my B-roll of the video I put on Hooniverse, like we didn't drive that. We, we didn't even know that section was there. Oops. We never got into any of the harder off-road stuff. Our, the challenges we wound up doing were more related to the periphery of adventure um, where the hardest challenge we did, and it fucking sucked, and I swear to this day, anybody who was a high lift jack on their vehicle has never actually used it or will never use it again. Um, we had to park a defender backwards at the base of a hill, and there's a tree up the hill with a, oh, a tree. No. There's a tree saver around it. Oh, no. And then there's various lengths of chain, and we had to <laughs> attach the chain to the high lift jack to the tree, figuring out the best way to attach it because mm -hmm. you have to be smart in how to use it. And then we have to high we have to high lift jack it two car lengths what? uphill. Uphill. And a high lift jack moves about this much each click, and we yeah. have to go two car lengths. Uh, so we're, and like so then like in, so that means you you can't do it without re, you have to reset the chains. And I think we had to reset the chains eight times. Good. And oh my god! So that means like that someone has to be in the car and the people jack and have to be like have the forethought to be like when they're switching chains be like put your foot on the brake you mm -hmm. know like um because you need the car in neutral and 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 then you have to undo it and all this shit and it sucked that sounds so terrible we i think we were the fastest at that there was another challenge that was really cool where there was um four 
big pieces of wood that were the base of a bridge, like probably like a 10 foot long bridge with all the planks removed. And you had to put the planks in and build the bridge. And in the middle was a Land Rover logo that had to be correct. And then drive over that and then disassemble it. And the guy said, not only was it the fastest of the group, it was like the fastest he'd ever seen anyone do it. That sounds like something from Survivor. It was, dude, it was so awesome. I just got to the the bridge in your video. In that, that's Scott Brady (laughs) in the shot. And uh, that, that's the team we actually reached out to at dinner to be like, Hey, let's meet in this one challenge. And we met at this challenge that was crazy where it's two trucks lined up, wenches pulled out. They had these gorgeous worn wenches with the Bluetooth um, controllers. Yeah. Gorgeous. Fancy. Uh, Gorgeous. Uh, You connect them to this, to ropes that go up this thing. And there's a big wooden beam with a tire on it. And you have to direct the trucks to winch the, the beam up. And there's three stickers on the back of the beam that they can't see. There's like a big sticker, a medium sticker, and a little sticker. And those stickers are worth different points. And you have to get the tire to rotate and go up and exactly line up with the sticker at the top of the beam. And oh so that's coordinating between two teams. So there's someone in the truck, someone outside the truck relaying what I'm saying back at the beam, me and the other person on the team. And I kind of just took over like directing. And I, I turned to her and I said, Hey, I, I don't want to just like yell over you or take this over. Um, she's like, no, no, no. If there were two of us doing it, it would, that's the high lift Jack challenge. If she's like, if there were two of us yelling, it would, it would get super confusing. You just keep going. So I would be like, I'd be, I would just be like, you go, you go, you like bump your Jack, bump your Jack and like work the thing up. And we had it right there. And then somebody accidentally backed their jack down or their winch down. And I was like, fuck. And we caught it real quick. So we got it up. We got it up. We got it up. And like, we're, well, we're like two inches from the top, but the sticker is like, here's the sticker here. And it's like, it's like just off and it has to be perfect. They specify like, if it's off, we won't give you the points. So uh, Brian Dore and our team goes to the judge out by him. He goes, can I just bang the winch cable on our side? And the guy's like, no one's asked that. Yes, you can. Because he was kind of like, what's going to happen? So he would just like, with his hand or his foot, he would just like bang the winch cable and it would be enough to like shake the tire a little bit. And it lined up and I stopped everybody. And I was like, bump your, bump your winch, bump your winch, bump your winch, bump. And we went bump, 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 bump. And we nailed it. Oh, there's, look at that that steely eyed gentleman. Um, (laughs) Yeah. And we, we barely moved it up there and, and we nailed it. It was like it was literally perfect and it was a huge uh points challenge that one so that because they're worth from like 10 to 40 points or something like that so that's the one you met scott's team on uh yes yep yeah. that's pretty fucking cool it was it was awesome and then at the very end we had enough time because you had to be back by 1 30 or you start losing points and we there was one more challenge on the way there that we we get there we're going to see what it is look there's the score sheet Oh, it was no even time more. to cry. It wasn't even 180. It was, one, it was 164. So even bigger spread than I said. Yeah, no time to cry. I love that somebody um, named their team Dirty Work, though. <laughs> <laughs> so we, Norm, shout out. We, um, we went to this last challenge before we were going to go, and, and we, we just pulled in. The guy's like, oh, it's winching and doing this up to that tree, blah, blah, blah. We're like, nope, we came through, and we're not going to do it. And we still got uh, some points just for driving Being through there. it which was like just to add to the points total. And we made it back with like seven minutes to spare. And they said we were the only ones to drive into the finish line with our, all the lights on because they have these really nice Baja design lights. And you can hear me in the back of their B roll being like, like those are our victory lights, baby. Like just half joking. And (laughs) they they were, they were the victory lights because Lindsay Vaughn's team was shooting a full production. And we got a a hint the night before. They're like, if you see a full production, that's Lindsay Vaughn's team maybe go to a different challenge and i'm like yeah good well, not that, that like maybe we never yeah. saw, we saw them once out of the course but mm-hmm. it was a good hint potentially apparently you guys did shit right so we killed it and I, they gave me um since we couldn't keep the trophy they gave me the lego technics defender yes which i already had problems with <laughs> I saw your oh, that joke yeah. was amazing. I saw uh, your I've post on Instagram and it went through Slack. Like <laughs> I, I fixed the problem already, but it, there's a part in the manual where, where it's like really hard to see which gear they're specifying to use. And so like I was rotating one side of the axle and the other side was rotating backwards. And like it wasn't meshing together right because it looks like the slightly larger gear and you need to use a slightly smaller gear. Um, oh. And it was, I posted it on Twitter. I'm like, can anybody help me? Uh, and that's after I finished it. So okay. that's when it's stage one is put together. And there's four stages. Um, it's really neat though, because it has working um, 
it has a working transfer case. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And uh, the engine will eventually, when we get to the engine, will there's like a working engine in it. Um, so it's actually, it's pretty oh, fucking, fucking cool. You can see there's like, um, if you go back one photo, there is the, those two like drive shafty things coming out, which I haven't got to yet. Um, but that orange piece at the top left is like slides back and forth and engages uh, is what makes the transfer case work. It's those actually... They look like U joints. That is actually really cool. It's insane, dude. And and you can see, like, if you go back another one, um, there's like the suspension on the side and the axle, and and it's dude, it's it's, oh it's really impressive. It's twenty six hundred pieces. That's actually yeah. pretty. That's a lot. It has a it has a winch. That it's a D, oh, together. it's a D ninety. Oh, I'm gonna have to buy this. Fuck. My that, that my, comment is good too about oh, the, the right there oh. whoever Mark Broadbridge is about drinking wine and taking days and hours. And yeah, eleven hours, three days, and two bottles. We did the Beetle last winter. That was like our COVID winter project. Nice. So needed defender. So did you like the D ninety? Um, like the real I, life one, not just the Lego. Yeah, version. yeah, yeah. Obviously, because in the in the in the um, Trek Defender, we were doing one tenths. And those mm -hmm. are the four cylinders, which I had driven prior. Uh, I like the D90 if you are a guy with no kids. Um, the enough. cargo space is a joke. It's actually really, really bad. The like, worst part is that the seats don't fold anything even close to five. No, they're like, they're like, it's, 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 and there's that beam that runs across too. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it's really shitty. I was yeah. so excited to take it camping and I, I couldn't, I was mm. not going to be able to get um, anywhere near the stuff we needed. So we threw it on the Montero and it was like, all right, no problem. Mm -hmm. um, but it is, it is good. I am a long wheelbase person, so I prefer long wheelbase vehicles, and I love the Defender 110. Mm -hmm. The D90 is good, though. That tight little it is. Um, uh, departure angle is is the shit, you know, and smaller vehicle with that already great nearly 400 horse engine is is pretty awesome. Yeah, um, but it's not slow. In no, no, 395 horse. Three uh, liter is not it, slow. It whips and it's yeah. comfortable off road and it looks good. The, that big piece of it glass. Looks fucking, it looks great. This was the yeah. first of all the press cars I've had that Sam stopped and looked at and was like, holy shit. Like that's I, like good. I looking. still would take a 110. No question. All day. Yeah, I need to. I, I like it, it, Same with the Bronco. Same with the Jeep. Same with obviously okay. the Montero. I prefer longer wheelbase. Mm -hmm. Did yours have the jump seat? Because the I, Montero? No, 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 the nice. Yeah, oh, is your Montero the jump seat? I'm sorry. Uh, well, my Montero is the bouncy seat. Bouncy it's a comfy seat. one. Bouncy seat is better than Defender's third middle. Jump the jump seat. seat's stupid. Fucking um, stupid. It, it, it ruins because when it's folded, it now you have no storage. It's stupid. This one did have that seat, and I hated it. You're right. So dumb. Um, yeah, it's dumb. Like I'm not on an expedition. We don't need a mechanic sitting there. No, it actually has good back seat leg room. Mm -hmm. which is why it has no cargo space. But the two-door Bronco has backseat legroom and has good cargo space. So they just fucked up on it. Yeah. Yeah. Also, if you're going to get the short wheelbase one, you why are you then trying to squeeze another person into it? Yeah. Yeah. Unless it is like one child because the door opens yeah. far enough to make it work. But Right. But the but, other thing is like, they did such a good job opening up space in the front row yeah that the jump seat just kill it just absolutely ruins it what it would be cool in the aftermarket um though it would never because you could never pass um collision with it is if you could remove the second row completely get rid of that stupid metal beam and then put like a side folding seat back there that you could fold up or take out mm -hmm. and then just have a like a two seat defender because then you would have good storage space the uh, actual like sideways jump seats like classic yes. defenders have yep. like, like doug's cruisers. defender yeah yeah that would be great or Daddy just take Doug. the fucking back seats out yeah and you can but then i wonder if that beam is still there because is it structural or is it decorative to like stop stuff sliding under the seats because if it's not structural Fine. absolutely go away all right landroverforums.com d90 in their <laughs> seats <laughs> I'm sure there's a hundred threat. Right. Who designed this? No, that's not what it says. Uh, can anyone sure confirm the <laughs> rear seats can fold completely flat? No. No, they don't. It, 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 and they're, they're not even lie. like kind of close to flat. It's atrocious. No, here. Oh when that gosh. shot up, I was all, so excited to go camping in the Defender. And the first few things I put in the back, I'm like, uh oh. 
but this is a this is a joke, right? Because the 110, I feel like the rear cargo space in the 110, even behind the seats, was still good. I don't totally remember that though. Mm -hmm. But I don't know, man. I can I can tell you though, uh, Tony Montero had no fucking problems. <laughs> As you would hope. No, oh, I almost burned the clutch on the drive to the campground. <laughs> <laughs> There's um, a lot of windy climbing roads where I was like constantly like between third and second. Oops. And so like when Holy I was pulling into park the, at the campground, it was like pedal was real soft. <laughs> oh boy. That beam is massive. Yeah. It's huge. There's nothing on the internet. Not that the internet tells all, but. I would be like sawzalling that fucker out of there. Doesn't look like it's easy. Just pull the back seats out, like in. The or I, I wouldn't have because I would have bought a one ten. Or that, yeah. It took oh, me that long nice. to find an image that was clear. Yeah, there you go. That is a great view of how shitty it is. Yeah. So stupid. Which is too bad I'm, because I'm thinking about every large SUV I've owned and the ability to fold stuff flat, like. The Land Cruiser, the rear seats would get out of the way, or I could take the four bolts out and just completely remove the seats. And I, I really want to know if that piece is structural or not, because I mm -hmm. feel like it's decorative. I feel like it's to stop stuff sliding under the seats. Right. Jeep does that with the leather package on the Wrangler Unlimited, but oh, not on the cloth. Stop. They have like, it's just a filler. It's just a fill plate. There's nothing. That has else. to be what that is. Gotta be. So it, pull that out. Stupid. Yeah. Cool truck otherwise. Dear Jerry McGovern. What the fuck? <laughs> yeah. Well, he's rich enough to have a 110 and yeah. a 90, so this isn't an issue. He is, yeah. You're too poor. Just buy another car and bring it with you. Yeah. Buy a Jag bed Jaguar. What's the... It makes me think of like the, the Thomas Crown Affair, like the 6 by 6 Wrangler they had behind them pulling their luggage as they drove off in some safari Mustang. Like I still love that Mustang. I think about that Mustang probably four times a year. Well, you... We should be seeing more of them. Safari's a thing. Like, yeah, I put something in chat because uh, oh, uh, right. Honda is doing an Africa Twin Overland. Yes, oh, it's so, which is so sick. I wish I rode motorcycles occasionally, not really, but bikes like that make me. <sighs> Same. Yeah, that thing's so good. One of my friends just finished the Trans America Trail on an Africa Twin. Wow! And uh, he's gonna, he's Chris. He's gonna come on the show sometime. I'm trying to figure out when but I'll come talk about it. I'm good with so, that. I've reached out to some It would be fun lately. to get on the show. I wonder if he'd come on. Um, you guys should talk to uh, the Honda Power Sports PR guy, Ben Hodges, because he was like a lot of fun on I've been, and I'm trying to take him. Well, barely. I'm going to make it more aggressive. I really want to take a Talon to mm -hmm. an off-road event. I want to run like fucking mid 400 or something in one of their talons or uh san gabriel 250 or the baja 500 and um i they i mean their their talon line is about to get a lot more aggressive um which would help with that uh and they seem like they're down for a lot of things but he'd be a fun guy to have on the show anyway because power sports pr people are a bit looser than like the auto side where they have to be oh we don't comment on future product i will talk to you offline about that okay have some Did stories. you not have a good experience? I have some stories. Oh, great. From the other side. But, okay. Uh, but did you see, the last thing I just want to talk about is, um, on that note, we're kind of planning something that might be related to that, and I'll okay. loop you in. But also, did you guys see Polaris's news yesterday? No. Polaris is putting a four, sorry, a two-liter four-cylinder engine in the new Razor. What? Oh. <laughs> yeah jesus and that's NA. two liter four four cylinder engine where are they getting it from i don't know the slingshot but what, what is that from because they're not making that engine right no it used to be like an ecotech didn't it like the first iteration it's but called a pro star pro star that's what players calls all their yeah like motorsports street going stuff but yeah so no power figures yet, but it's uh, it's not going to be slow. Definitely not going to be slow. And then they're obviously going to throw force induction on it, and it's going to be a cycle if deck machine. If they use that engine, are they still going to do a CVT, you think? Is that kind um, of butter? That's what they use in everything right now. I don't know. I mean, we know CVTs can handle that kind of power because it's what road cars use. Yeah. But 
I, I've had pretty good experiences with their CVTs and even with their belts. I just would like the Talon's DCTs. That's great. I do that with a fucking, you know, four cylinder engine. Like, okay, done. Cool. Yeah. Polaris says they design, engineer, and manufacture from the ground up those engines. Wow. <laughs> Don't buy it buy the first year. It's like the block is stamped GM on the bottom. Probably. Or, this or it's like, or it's, or it's <laughs> Honda, and they're like, don't say this. Because <laughs> we'll double dip on this shit. We don't give a fuck. Buy our engines. We know you're going to sell more uh, side by sides. So smart. Fuji. Just like heavy. a K series motor. Fuji heavy. Was a part just, of their engine production up until 95. Oh, until 95. So maybe they just learned a bunch from them and they're like, okay. And then, like, yeah, for that's the longest time ago. for like the 2013 model year, they came back. But it's not a boxer engine, right? No, no, no. it's okay. an inline. That'd be sick. That'd be fucking crazy. Because that's I don't, what I don't think there's enough real estate behind. Yeah, but that's what probably not a side by side, but that's what the wide open buggies run is the old EJs. Yeah, wide open. There's Omaha. more room in those. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, made it though. There's in a lot of the side-by-sides these days now there's that's more fucking travel. true oh my god some of those things are just especially stupid. the can-ams yeah the x3 those is a huge trophy X3s. truck travel they, they are they are <laughs> i know <laughs> fucking crazy all right guys i need to uh jump i just like here. the polaris because the names get super long it's so like do the, the can-ams can-am x3 ds turbo rr max s it's like that kind of jumble yeah sounds like you're calling a football play I'll find one. I'll find the other one for you, dude. The one you had recently, the Polaris the RZR one thousand Razor Trail, Trail S, S one thousand premium. premium. Yeah, that's <laughs> too much. That's not even a dead one. Uh, yeah, give me five seconds. I'll, I'll, Chris, you can start wrapping the show up, and I'll, I'll find a fucked up name for you. Uh, well, Jeff, what would you like to plug? Um, Universe. Universe. What's that? Go listen to the Hooniverse podcast. Go to Hooniverse.com. Follow me on Instagram at Hooniverse Jeff. Go to the YouTube channel because I would really like to hit 50,000 subs by the end of the year, but it's like, it is like a dripping faucet of subscribers. Um, but so whatever, you do whatever you want, actually. I'm not yeah. going to tell you people what to do. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> the audio the listener, Jeff was just really close to the screen the whole time. Go get a tattoo. <laughs> you got what a tattoo. Like? It was nice. Yeah. I liked it. Thanks, man. It made my wife go, when are we getting our tattoos? And I was like, I still, I'm not. Like, she wants to do it, and I don't like paint, so. They make creams now. <laughs> Dude, that's... I didn't use it for this, but I'm going to use it for the inside. I 100% was using it on my lower back, the, the top of the spray, <laughs> like my old man back. I put together a barbecue grill and spent two days spraying that on my back. Anyway. Nice. No, the cream is supposed to be, like, legit. Okay. Oh, man. Okay, why'd you tell Maverick me that? 2022 Can M Maverick X3 Max XDS Turbo RR? What a dumb name! Like, fix Can-Am that. Maverick Just... X3 Max XRS Turbo RR with smart shocks. So, side by sides need to do better, like trim levels, like cars. Yeah, like you have an F 150 Lariat, you have an F 150 XLC. Yeah, do like, do yeah, do that, guys. Like, just do that. I want the yeah. Can Am fast, motherfucker. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So FMF, done. FMF, that's it's already a motor company, company, company though. Yeah, <laughs> <Is it? laughs> see, I don't even know that. Song. Yeah, FMF, HMF, yeah. All anyway, exhaust companies. Yes. I'll wrap up everything. So you can rate review this show on iTunes. You can also find the Hooniverse podcast. It's back. Jeff does shows again. Back from the, the thing. Uh, you can like and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Uh, yeah, I, again. Do that too. Yeah. Dude, it is the slowest of trickles there for subscribers. <laughs> I feel like I've had 45,000 subs for three years. <laughs> uh, yeah. Send us some. I mean, it no. doesn't make you any money. Don't worry about it. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> it nothing. So uh, you follow Hooniverse, the Hooniverse on Twitter, the real Hooniverse on Instagram. You can read what we write on Hooniverse, UTV driver, ATV writer, everyday driver. That's, That's a, a lot. lot. <laughs> I'm That's only one of them. I write for you. <laughs> And even then, not that often. Oh, go, go, go watch uh, my reviews on Auto Trader too. I should probably, I should probably be a full time gig. 
Uh, okay. You can see Lynn too. Like you and Lynn are in a lot of yeah. them together. Like um, we did a few. We're gonna do more. Yeah. The okay. plan is to do more. She's much more. She is the Kelly side, but we're gonna do some more cross pollinization. I like it. Cool. Uh, you can follow Ross at No Not Like the One from Friends, and I'm at Overlandy Dad. And we've done another show. Thank you, Jeff. I think this makes you our m- most like frequent guest now. I think this is oh, four times. Nice. Yeah. Nice. We gotta that's, get. Uh, that's how I do on these things. For a long time, I was the number one on like uh, smoking tire, yeah. <laughs> and then that, that I, I'm, I'm sure I've since been eclipsed by like Lieberman or something. Yeah.